use any of that particular part. Um, but now, from now on, it's uh, cameras free, microphones free, uh, to do as you wish. Okay, so uh, I'll now continue. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Afternoon, Jeff. <laughs> My name is Jeff Taylor, and I'm honoured to be a part of this most important movement at such a critical stage of our nation's history. We all know it. The UK is fragmented. Fragmented to the point of breaking. Fragmented along the lines of ethnicity, religion, wealth, age, language, and all the rest of it. All driven by the insatiable desire of the woke left to destroy this great nation, and then build a communist state from out of the rubble. I, for one, will oppose them with every breath I have. Those woke traitors have worked tirelessly to denigrate our history, our heritage, and the very people of this land. They have eroded the cultural bedrock of our country away, including our communities and families. Free speech is fast becoming a thing of the past, and justice is two-tier and flagrantly biased against the majority. You know, that so-called far-right majority. And now we have a Welsh Labour First Minister who has brazenly stated that she requires the white Welsh majority to bow down and fit in with the minority newcomers. And be in no doubt, that is also destined for England under Keir Starmer's Labour government. That is anti-democratic. Allowing a minority <coughs> to pull the strings is tyranny, not democracy. We need to re-establish the bedrock of our British society, and I fervently believe the pledge will become that solid bedrock. And the greater the number of people who sign up to it, the firmer that bedrock will become. Our mainstream politicians will try to ignore it. They will try to duck it, but they will not escape. If they fail to accept it, they will become political history. Now for context, we are here today in Runnymede, where on the 15th of June 1215, King John was forced to sign the Magna Carta. Yes, forced to sign the Great Charter that guaranteed English political liberties and rights. Just think on that for a moment. Now this is not about isms. This is about rediscovering our cohesive and integrated society, our majority cohesive and integrated society. And that is why I am now signing the pledge. Slow down, slow down. But, but, this is not just about words on parchment. This is about people. We need people to spread the message of the pledge. People <coughs> like you. But more importantly, we need prominent people in society who believe in the UK to step up to the plate and fight the political fight. And here in this room, we do have several of those prominent people who can make a difference. And one of the more prominent of them is sat here, right in front of me, Ben Habib, the best Prime Minister of modern times that has not yet been elected. <laughs> not yet, ladies and gentlemen. And I know he is a believer in the UK because of his work regarding something that just about no other politician will even acknowledge, let alone talk about, the Northern Ireland Protocol. Yes, that fiendish device concocted by the Ramonas to try and reel us back into the evil empire once more. Did you know that Stormont will be voting next month on whether or not that protocol even continues? Ben does, but virtually no one else will talk about him. The Northern Ireland Protocol might sound like a minor concern, but Ben knows it isn't. He knows how damaging a border within the UK down the Irish Sea really is. That's why he's different from the rest in Westminster and the rest of them out there. And that's why he's important. All I will say is, welcome Ben, and invite him to say a few words. <laughs> And um, can I just say before I say anything, before I say anything, can I just say that 
that every one of you um, are fighting the fight to save the United Kingdom. It's obviously there are some people who have the privilege of a greater voice, and Andrew is one of them, and I may be one of them. But we're all fighting the same fight. And what's tragic, in a sense, is that the pledge is even needed. Because if you read down the list, uh, all of it should be basic British common sense, shouldn't it? If you are a British citizen and you believe in the United Kingdom, every single one of these things should automatically follow. Um, certainly when I was brought up, I've got my old school tie on, when I was brought up, um, I was taught to be proud of this country. I was taught that our forefathers were phenomenal, the agrarian revolution started here, the industrial revolution, we were at the forefront of scientific development, we had the best common law, we had the best empire, and I'm very proud of the empire. My father was on the, a, a beneficiary of the empire, having been born in what was then British India, became Pakistan. So I see, I see the United Kingdom from that historical context, a context where Christianity was the, the blanket which wrapped us, but protected the United Kingdom's values and culture, and through which our fantastic democracy, our judicial system, our common law, our thirst for hung, uh, our hunger for, uh, for knowledge, our preparedness for diversity of thought, all of that came out of those roots. And what we've developed over the last I think particularly the last 27 years since Tony Blair came into office, is a preparedness to put individuals above and, to, uh, and beyond and to the detriment of the country, to the majority. We say we live in a liberal democracy. Actually, we have set aside democracy in the pursuit of liberalism. And when you champion the individual at the expense of the, uh, uh, of the majority, <coughs> what you end up with is the kind of shutting down of free speech that Jeff was <coughs> referring to and David before him. Because in order for the majority, in order for the nation to give up that which is best for the nation, you can't have free speech. Can you see that? Because the, nation, the majority would speak up against it. And so when you head for this extreme form of liberalism that we've got, you then create all, you have the results and the symptoms against which the pledge is kicking back. And as I say, it is tragic that we have to state the obvious, but we have to state it. We have to push back, we have to yank against liberalism, the extreme form of liberalism that we've got, that's led to global governance, the inability to recognize that British citizens should come you know, first and foremost in our uh, elected politicians' minds, and that they should be making policies for the national interest, for the majority interest, we need to yank against that liberalism and re-establish what it means to be democratic. And you can only have a democracy, you can only have a democracy if you understand the nation state. Democracy is not some kind of fluid thing that you can globally apply. It requires a nation state through which to operate. You can't have a democracy for the United Kingdom if you don't understand what is the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. And thank you very much for identifying the Northern Irish issue, because it is absolutely vital. If you have a political class that is prepared to hand over 1.8 million people that are not in a British protectorate, not in a former colony, but a part of the United Kingdom, we are done. We are done as a country. And that's precisely what they've done. They see it as a bureaucratic, technocratic thing. But anyone who doesn't pick up on the massive damage done to the fabric of this country, and indeed who we are as a people by the Northern Ireland Protocol, is completely underestimating the damage that that protocol has done to this country. And as you said, Jeff, next week, or in a couple of weeks' time, they're going to be voting on the protocol in Stormont. And effectively, what Stormont is going to be asked to vote for is for the elected politicians of Northern Ireland to give up their right to represent their people. That is precisely what is at stake. The Northern Irish Assembly is going to vote, and they will vote in favour, to give up their obligation to represent their people. I don't think any politician has the right to do that. Um, so we are where we are. Democracy has been undermined by this incessant march towards liberalism. I'm very, very grateful 
to those who drafted the pledge, who had the courage to draft what is bleedingly obvious to most people, but thank you very much for doing it. The obvious needs to be stated. I'm very, very grateful to all of you coming here today and for all the fight that you put up. And what I pledge to you is that I don't care which political party is in power, I don't care which political party is carrying the baton from time to time ostensibly for these values, I will fight for these values for the rest of my life inside a political party or if necessary outside it and if absolutely necessary in my own political party, whatever it takes to get these pledges done. Thank you very much. <laughs> Would you mind looking up, Ben? Just... Yeah. <laughs> Is that good? Guys, when you have... Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Let me kiss. Sorry. If you do that again, sir. Do another... Do the cross. Fake it. I can't fake it. It's on camera. Is that good? Beautiful. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Ben. everybody else to to sign the pledge and the speakers have really said everything that anybody could say about it and thanks very much Ben for coming it's a, it's a privilege to to stand next to you while you're doing this and again thank you for what you're doing about Northern Ireland there's three people here from Northern Ireland sorry four people here from Northern Ireland today so what you've done Ben we cannot express our gratitude strongly enough I said it to you privately I'm saying it to you publicly now and the people of Northern Ireland know you and love you. And we want the people of the United Kingdom to get to know Ben and love Ben and, as, as, um, as Jeff said, see him as Prime Minister. I suppose a few things I want to just say. This isn't a pledge for the elites. That's why there's none of the elites in this room today. <laughs> this is the pledge for the people. We've called it the People's Pledge. And Jeff talked about the Magna Carta. I believe that this is the Magna Carta for the 21st century. This document and the people involved in this document and the people that I believe will sign this document will have the power to totally change and transform this country. Because I think we all agree this country is going in completely the wrong direction. And with a document like the pledge, in fact, the pledge is really the, the only show in town when it comes to ideology and a document for people on the right. And let me say a few things about what the, the pledge does. First of all, <coughs> it keeps the far right, because there is a real far right, there are real Nazis, there are real unpleasant people who are racist, <coughs> anti-Semitic, engulfed in identity politics. It keeps the real far right away from our sort of politics, and that's a massive, massive thing, and that's part of why the pledge was designed. But it also gives a voice to the silenced people, because we've got friends, people that we know that have come to our events, that are now sitting in prison. In fact, one of them died in prison. They're the people that the pledge is about, and they're the people that the pledge is for. We need to give a voice to the silenced people. So that's part of this. And for everybody else, the, the, the vast majority of the people of this country, the firemen, the farmers, the policemen, the soldiers, the businessmen, the builders, that's who the pledge is for. It's not for an elite, it's for the people. And I believe if we can get 10 million people to sign this document, we can change this country. And that's our goal. We want 10 million people to be signed up to the pledge. And then come the election in 2029 or whatever it is, when we have Ben leading a party. Yes. Well, or whoever. I mean, like Ben said, it's not a party political thing. So you've got the party sitting along the bottom, and above it, you've got the ideology of the pledge, which is moderate. Yes, it's conservative. Yes, it's about British culture and about British values. And yes, it's about Christianity. And we must never forget that 1,500 years of Christianity has shaped what this great United Kingdom is. But this is for everybody, irrespective of race, creed, or class. This is the People's Pledge. And I'm going to invite everybody to come up and sign the People's Pledge, but I'm going to sign it first. <laughs> <laughs> Could you say a few words as well? Oh, wow. I've got it. Oh, sorry. sorry. Slow down. Slow down, Bob. Beautiful. Do you want me to do that again? You smell, Bob. You smell, Bob. Lovely. That's better. That's lovely. Lovely. Thank you. Sorry, Paul. In your own time. <laughs> <laughs> Do you wish that, Ladies and gentlemen, 
Ben is absolutely right. This pledge is only common sense. And the mere fact that it has to be stated here today and we sign up to it is a sad indictment of the state of our society and the political system that shaped our society over the last few decades. I can assure you from the inside that the politicians we have in Westminster do not think they serve the people. Their actions demonstrate that. And as I've said before, when you've got, when the people are scared of the politicians, that's tyranny. And when the people, when the politicians are scared of the people, that is true democracy. And we do need to get to the latter. And the pledge is a vehicle. Strong principles you can build a political mandate from, which would have the overwhelming support of the public and something that will rock those in the elites in Westminster. And I thank you for inviting me here today to support what's something which I think can move our country and our society forward. Thank you very much. is if we just do it by row. So, John, I'm going to ask you to put your camera down if you're inside. I'll hold the camera. I'll, I'll, I'll completely mess it up because I'm not a cameraman. But don't have to press the buttons. And if you want to say a few words and you sign it, feel free. Oh, I'm not good. Okay. <laughs>